Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we have a great lesson. We are going to analyze a solo from George Benson. This is his solo from Beyond the Blue Horizon on So What? And we're specifically going to look at his use of pentatonics and different concepts circling that pentatonic idea. Some of this is a great application of what we talked about in some previous lessons. In a future lesson, we'll look at some of his bebop lines and blues ideas in this solo. But right now we're just looking at the pentatonic ideas. So I have a bunch of examples. We're going to get into it. Starting off with this opening phrase. And what I like about this and what I want to remind you guys of is what a clear opening statement it is. So in starting his solo, he's not instantly running a bunch of complicated, you know, theoretical attempts here. He's really just stating something based off the pentatonic with a very clear idea. So in going through your own solos, make sure you have that in mind where your starting point is a very clear opening solo. Okay, so that's example one. Again, you can check out all of this in the free PDF in the description below. I included a bit of the opening solo so you can see what that is in context and learn that and then all of these examples as well. The second example we are looking at is the next phrase he's playing here. And what I like about this is he's using that minor pentatonic from a fifth above whatever chord we're on. So we're on doing so what? So we're on this like D minor kind of sound. And so he's playing from A minor pentatonic. And then what he does is transitions back into D minor right here with this kind of like a blues, D blues lick. And then going into D minor. Right? Now you might say, okay, he's really just playing the ninth for D minor, and that's one way of looking at it. But throughout the solo, there's a lot of examples that the way he's actually thinking about it is as if it was A minor pentatonic. Okay? He's not playing the other F notes when he's playing that E. That's a great one. I also want to point out this little phrase that little chromaticism. You can also use on this G descending into E. It's a very similar concept to what we've talked about before with our bebop scales. Or either way, it sets you up to still be within a D minor sound while adding some chromaticism. For example three, we're going to look at this same idea of using the minor sound from a fifth above. In this case, with the E flat minor seven from So What. This happens in a later chorus of the solo, but I want to still point it out. And what he does is he's using a G flat major triad for E flat minor seven, and then playing over the B flat minor seven sound through that. So let me play that for you. This fourth example is a really, really interesting idea. And I think it points out one way we can go wrong in analyzing these kinds of solos. So if we were looking at this and analyzing it vertically, we might think that in this next phrase, Benson is playing C minor pentatonic over D minor. But I think that's the wrong way to look at it. What's really going on is Benson is using concepts in his soloing that we usually think of in comping. So this is much more integrated in Benson's mind. If we're playing over this, D minor, and we're about to go into E flat minor on the section of so what? One way we might comp with that is play C minor, D minor into E flat minor. So Benson's taking that idea of walking up C minor, D minor into E flat minor. He's taking that concept and doing it in his soloing, which I always find is a helpful reminder since I don't find that I do that as often. I think of it as almost two separate realms. We have comping and soloing and Benson's really using some of the same concepts throughout either of those. So let's play this line and learn a little bit more about the specifics of how he's doing that. On guitar, it fits really nicely. So it's, we have that little upfront 
um, dotted eighth note. What's great about this is it's always just the first and third finger. So it really helps with the picking. And he's landing on that D, which takes him back into D minor. And now that phrase continues. So once we hit that D, that's our D minor portion. And then he continues in D minor pentatonic. One, two, going into E flat minor. This next short example is example five, and this one implements sidestepping, which we've talked about in that previous lesson on pentatonics, which I'll link right up above, and also connects to this pentatonic from a fifth. So what does he do? He, he's playing this phrase. A couple things I wanna point out here. So he's doing the D minor pentatonic, and then we could think of this as C sharp minor pentatonic. And what would you expect? You would expect the next thing for him to do to be, since that's the pattern he set up. But it's not what he does. And I think that's always interesting. We always wanna see if we have a certain expectation of what would happen, what does someone who's at the level of someone like George Benson do that's different from how we would do it? Because that's how we learn. If, if I think, oh, I would probably have gone like that, but George Benson does something different, I wanna learn what he's doing not necessarily what I'm doing in this case. So what I like about it is it's that third time you have an expectation and he changes that. So that makes it interesting to us. And what's he doing there? He's taking from, again, that A minor pentatonic. So we have D minor, C sharp minor, A minor. It's a really interesting and simple example of how he breaks our expectations, even with a simple little pattern like that. So just like I want to learn from things that Benson does differently from how I would think of them or originally, I also want to make note of areas where Benson is repeating some of his ideas because that speaks to them being an integral part of his playing and important. So one important way in this solo, at least, where he does that is using this same sort of pentatonic pattern, which we've seen before in another section on D minor. So again, this is on D minor, this is example six, and he we have two beats up front, one, two, that. What's cool here is he actually plays that basically that same phrase earlier in the solo as well in D minor also. So he's repeating a melodic idea and also this pentatonic pattern. So if that isn't comfortable in your fingers, this kind of pentatonic pattern, it probably is for most of you, but if it's not, it's definitely one you want to work on. And all it is is starting on a note in the pentatonic, going down two notes in the pentatonic, and starting back at your original note. Then we repeat that pattern one note down from our pentatonic. So we started on A, so A, G, F, A, and then G, F, D, G, F, D, C, F, switches it up. This seventh example is gonna seem really weird for you if you haven't checked out my last video. Um, that one, for whatever reason, didn't get as many views, but it is very important. So I'll link that one also up here and you guys will understand this theory a little bit more for why this part works. So this is example seven, and in this part, he's playing B flat minor seven over D minor, which seems very strange because there's a lot of notes that we wouldn't on the surface think work. And first let me play the lick and then we'll get into it. So why does this work? Well, we would be wrong to analyze this as saying, oh, well, the, you know, the D flat here over D minor is a major seventh. Don't, you don't wanna do any of that. We want to think of the bigger picture, like one or two levels higher than that. And what's going on is he's basically implying a tritone sub to D minor instead of like E to A altered to D minor, that kind of two five, he's doing a tritone sub from E, which is B flat, doing B flat minor, E flat seven into that D minor. And so if we have that understanding, and again, I talk about that more in this last week's video, He's playing lines from that and then sliding back in to D minor with this half step voice leading of B flat to A. Once we hit that A, we're back in D minor. And again, he does that chromaticism I talked about earlier. G down to E and then ending on D, right? Really cool line. For our last example here, 
This is strictly based on D minor pentatonic, and I include it just because it's a very cool guitaristic kind of thing to use, and one that I'm gonna have a lot of fun with. So we have this slide in with eighth notes, and then a triplet. So. So when we start this, we start with that third finger slide, then go to your first finger to slide back. Don't slide with the third finger back. So you have, and then we restart with the third finger. This lick is meant to be repeated over and over to build that kind of tension. It usually would happen towards the end of a solo or at a point you're trying to build a climax, and that is where Benson's using it. Um, the other thing here is if we notice the rhythm of it, it's not a full bar, but he's playing it continuously. So what happens is our start for the phrase keeps falling on different beats of the measure, which is really cool. It gives us a feeling like we're playing across the bar, which again is a really cool feel. It's very, very drummer-like in that you're controlling these accents on different beats. Really great aspect. In the next lesson, I want to talk about how Benson is using all of these interesting bebop lines and really cool stuff he's doing with that, as well as some of the three note approaches we talked about a few weeks back when we we're doing bebop scales. So all of that will be coming in the next lesson. Guys, if you like this video, please do hit the like button. It does help comment so I can know what you guys are thinking about this video, any feedback, any suggestions, anything like that. And subscribe if you are new to the channel. I uh, appreciate all your guys' support. You guys can check the link in the description, all the links in the description for more resources. So hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you in the next video.